Hi, today we're in the exhibit at the Edward D. Museum Art and Science, the Perfect Chemistry. We're going to look at how engineering and math have come together throughout the ages. The artist, Brunelleschi, was an architect who discovered scientific perspective and used it as a way to recreate three-dimensional design. His theories have really pushed forward those combinations of art and engineering. We're also going to examine the works of Leonardo da Vinci today and see how he did the same thing. We're going to make a flying machine in our art project. So come along with me and we'll have some fun. Today we're going to learn about Leonardo da Vinci who is an artist and a scientist. So we're going to make a model of one of his inventions, a flying machine. It never was used but it was an idea that was very creative and helped other people to think that way too. Today you'll need rubber bands, toothpicks, or you can also use uh, paper clips, some things to make round shapes. So you could use the top of a water bottle or a cup as you can see here. Of course we'll need scissors and a pencil and a ruler and to use to make the body we'll need to have a paper towel roll and a, I, what I've done here is I've cut a old cereal box so we have some good cardboard but if you don't have that what you can use instead is possibly something that it has a real stiff uh, body to it like watercolor paper or even Bristol board so get those things together and we're going to start making our flying machine. Once you have your materials, we're going to use some of those materials to make a pattern that will become the, the pattern to cut out our cardboard. So you just want to start with a piece of paper and draw the shapes that you're going to use for your wing and your tail. You don't need to draw two wings because we're only going to use this as a pattern and so we can use it twice. My wings are about 11 inches wide, as you can see here. And the widest part of my wing is about four inches. Now I've chosen to draw a, a round shape, but you can make any shape you would like to. Um, some of the things you can use to make this shape is maybe a bowl shape, or you can just do it freehand, like I've done. Um, you can also use things like, I showed you plastic cups or anything around it. And you can see I did that with the scalloped edge here. Or you can use uh, a plastic cup uh, top for a water bottle that also can make a scalloped edge. Be creative and it, it's, your, it's your project so you can do whatever you want to do and experiment. So the bottom here is two inches and as I said this is four inches so you can see it tapers down it becomes shorter at one end. Once you've drawn this out we're going to move on to the tail. Now the tail will start with a rectangular shape and right, right now I've drawn something that's seven and a half inches by three and a half inches. It's just a rectangle. What I want to do is find the middle of that rectangle so I start by measuring the full width of the, the one edge of the rectangle is three and a half inches and I want to find the halfway point. So three and a half inches divided by two is one and three quarters and you can practice your math by using whatever size you have and finding the halfway. One and three quarters I put a dot and then I go down to the other end and also put another dot at one and three quarters. This gives me a halfway point that I can use to line up my ruler along those two dots and draw a line straight down. The reason I wanted to do that is that I want my tail to kind of taper down towards the middle and I want it to be even on both sides of that so my, my tail doesn't get crooked. So I'd like to make the bottom part two and a half inches compared to the larger part of the, the rectangle three and a half inches. So again I want to find that halfway point and the halfway point is one and one quarter. So I start at that middle line that I made and measure out one and one quarter on this side and one and one quarter on this side. And as you guessed it you take your ruler and line up the dots and just draw a line straight down on both sides. Right there. Alright, so now we have our pattern on paper. What I would like you to do is take your scissors and cut these both out. And when you get back from cutting out your, your patterns, we'll start on the next step. Alright, so we have our patterns. And I've cut them out, and you can see that this is just an ordinary 
Cheerios box that I'm gonna use the cardboard for. So it's a kind of a way to recycle some things you might have around the house and don't have to buy anything. When you look at this, you can see that I've cut this and it's, it fits on one side of the cereal box and then I have extra room for the other side of the cereal box. What you wanna do is you want to draw along your pattern and draw your wing and your tail. And we'll use this to cut things out. Now Leonardo da Vinci started out as a little boy being very interested in things around him. Nature, why things worked. He always was curious about learning about new things. And he would walk around in the country and he would look at things and try to figure out how water moved from one way to one place to the other, for example. And he was always drawing things in his notebooks to keep record of the things that he learned. And I think it's very interesting for us we have so many things that we can use to find out why things work and sometimes we don't bother. So what I'd like you to do after you make this and maybe thinking about uh, inventing things, maybe you can look up some things about Leonardo da Vinci if you have books at home or you can go on the internet and find out some of the inventions he made. Now I think he probably realized that it, a lot of the things that he thought of would never be made, but he was interested in trying to figure out how it could possibly happen. That's a good way to look at things, to, to think about all the inventions that could be made and maybe try making some inventions. This is just the first experiment and trying to see how to make things work and all the parts that go together because you're building it. Now, of course, this is out of paper, but it doesn't matter. It's a beginning. So we're going to have these two parts on this side and then the other wing on this side. Now keep in mind that you want your wing, if you don't want the cereal box to show on one side, you want your wing to be flipped over so that when you put your wings together on your body, both sides are facing up with your, your cardboard. After we're done cutting these out, what I would say is if you want to decorate it with your markers or to paint it or to put stickers on it um, or glue things on these wings, this is the chance that you do this before we start to put it together. So after we cut all of this out, if you would like to take a little time and decorate. Name your, your flying machine. You can name it, you know, the bat or whatever name you can think of. Maybe draw that on one of the wings or the tail. And then when you're all done, you'll have something that you made. Okay, I'm all done drawing these three parts out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some time to cut these out of the cardboard. All right, so we have our shapes cut out. So let's see what we're gonna do with them. This is the body of your, this is the, the card paper roll, our cardboard roll. What I, first thing I want you to do is cut off some of the middle of this. Make a line going down this side and a line going down this side and then cut this section out. So you end up having something that looks like this. We have a front part that's about four inches long, and then the back of it is, half of it is cut away. The reason for this is we wanna keep our flying machine light as we can so that it doesn't just go down to the ground. So what we, once we've done that, what I'd like you to do, I'm just gonna show you in this cardboard roll, is we're gonna use a paper clip, or you can also tape to toothpicks together with some masking tape and we're going to create a hole through the middle of that cardboard roll in this section here and you can either stick your toothpicks through there or what I've done that I think is really helpful and holds this, the rubber bands a little bit better I make another hole on the opposite side right here with my pencil And I'm just going to bend up my paper clip like this and stick it through the two holes so it comes out the back. And this will hold my rubber bands because what we want to do is we want to have the rubber bands held so they stay in place. So as you can see, I've stuck my paper clip through and I brought this part through the back and you can bend it and and then we can tape it down when we're ready to, to finish up. 
This is going to hold these two rubber bands. So we stick the two rubber bands over the top of this paper clip, and you can see that they come out to either one of the sides, like this. And this is going to hold up our wings in place so they don't just fall over. Now once you have your rubber bands in place, what you want to do is you want to hold your cardboard tube right in the middle of the wings. Our wings were taped together as you can see. We've taped these together. We have our cardboard roll cut out. We put our paper clip through the middle to hold our rubber bands and we put our rubber bands over that edge. And you want to hold this right in the middle, position it, and then pull your rubber band and figure out where would be the place that you would like to attach your wing. And just take your pencil and just make a mark on this side and make a mark on this side. Okay, and once you've done that, you can poke a hole through with your pencil, just like this. And we're going to attach the wings first. And we just attach them with tape. Have some good tape. Duct tape works probably really good. I'm just using masking tape. But duct tape will work. Uh, you can also attach it with scotch tape, whatever you think will hold. You want to make sure it's hold really well so it doesn't come off. I mean, you can even tape around this if you want to. I'm not going to do that right now because I want to be able to show you what happens next. So once we have this taped down, what you want to do is you can take your pencil or scissors and you can push your rubber band through the hole. You've made a hole with your pencil, poked it in there. And you can take your pencil and you can then poke through your rubber band through the holes. It takes a little work, you know, just kind of hold it and poke it through. And once you have it through, what you're going to do is you're going to attach this back in here and hold it by pushing through your toothpick. Oh, if I could get this in here. There we go. And you just put your toothpick like that and it'll hold it steady. Okay. So we're going to do that on both sides. See, I'm just holding my, pushing the rubber band through with the tip of my pencil, and then I'm just going to stick another toothpick through there and pull it tight on this side. So that gives our, our flying machine a little bit of, of flexibility. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to put in your tail. Now my tail can be adjusted, and this is why I haven't really taped it yet. I'm just going to tape it a little bit because the part of the engineering that I'm going to have you do on, on your own to experiment is trying to fly this machine. Now, if it's too heavy, it's going to just fall down. And what you can do, if it's too heavy, is you can take off your tail and start to cut it down a little bit smaller, or even cut the back of this down so it, it gets rid of the weight. If you notice that your, your flying machine c goes down like this, then maybe your wings are too heavy. So you can remove some of the weight of your wings by just removing part of the wing. So what I did here is I kind of drew a line where I would cut this part off and I would cut this part off if I found that it was too heavy for mine to fly. And that would give me some, some less weight. What you can do is experiment. Depending on what size you've made yours, you can cut this down a little bit, maybe cut this part back, and get this to where you want it. The other thing too is you can cut off a little bit of the top if it's too heavy. 
But it's nice because we start it out really big and we can start to remove some of the extras so that as we start to test it and experiment and engineer it as Leonardo da Vinci did, we can start to remove um, some of the weight. If you need to add back some weight, if you realize you've cut too much, again, you still have that, that insert that you cut out of the, the cardboard tube and you can weight that down and you can make it a little heavier. The part that's most exciting is that you get to engineer your flying machine and you get to experiment with it and figure out what works best. I think it's kind of interesting. You can, like Leonardo da Vinci did, maybe make a little page or a notebook that you keep track of what works and doesn't work. That's what engineers do. They experiment. That's what scientists do. They're trying to experiment and figure out what works best. Leonardo da Vinci would have done the same thing. He had an idea and then he saw if it worked. And not all, all ideas work the best, but Playing with this will give you a real good idea of how science and art has worked together over the ages. And I hope that you'll have a lot of fun experimenting with making your flying machine. When you're done, if you would send us some pictures or videos of you flying them, we'd love it. But I hope that whatever you do, you have a really fun time experimenting and becoming someone that's an artist and an engineer. A great combination of art and science. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.